Inside this box is the T-1000S Pixel LED controller. In this tutorial, I'm going to unbox it, review it, and show you how to use it with Pixel LED strings. Watch until the end where I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot if the Pixel LED controller doesn't work. As you can see, everything is inside this bag. I'm going to pull it out. Nothing inside. Okay, let's take one by one and see what is inside. All right, the first thing is the user manual in Chinese language. Okay. There are English instructions as well. That is your user manual. All right, let's see what else inside. Okay, this is the memory card. It is a 256 megabyte memory card. If you want, you can use a memory card that has higher capacity than that one. All right, let's see what else inside. All right, this is a screwdriver. So you can use it with the terminals of this controller. All right, let's see what else inside. That's it. This is the Pixel LED controller itself. There is no mention about the model number. These are the push buttons for various settings. First, file terminals here are for connecting various type of pixel LED strings or strips. The last four terminals are for networking pixel LED controllers. Okay, it is Okay, this is the SD card slot and these two LEDs are for error and power indication. These terminals can be removed like that by pulling it out. You can put it back by pushing so you can easily swap controllers if the pixel LED controller doesn't work. There's no display in this controller. It is quite simple controller. And, but the features inside this Pixel LED controller are very good. It is almost a decade old Pixel LED controller. First introduced in 2012. All right. All right. When it comes to powering up this Pixel LED controller, you have two options. You can use a power supply that outputs a voltage between 7.5 to 24 and input that power through the first and second terminals of this Pixel LED controller. Or you can use a power supply that outputs 5 volts and input that power through the second and third terminal of this Pixel LED controller. This first, sorry, this 7.5 to 24 volt input is connected to a voltage regulator IC inside this controller and it will step down that voltage to 5 volt and supply that voltage to the microcontroller and the other ICs inside this Pixel LED controller. You might ask why there are two options when it comes to powering up this Pixel LED controller. 
because there are different pixel LED strips and strings that use different voltages you can use these power options so you can use that same power supply for the pixel LEDs and the pixel LED controllers let's see how to connect a 5 volt power supply like this one it is a 5 volt 13 ampere power supply to the pixel LED controller then we'll then we will connect a 12 volt 20 ampere power supply to the pixel LED controller All right take a two core wire like this one strip the wire about one centimeter on both ends then take the power supply if you look at the power supply closely you can see this these first three terminals are the positive terminals and the second three terminals are the negative terminals of this power supply so I'm going to connect this red wire to the positive terminal one of the positive terminals and then I'm going to connect this red and black wire to one of the negative terminals of this power supply let's do that all right take the power supply all right I'm going to loosen one of these positive terminals then I'm going to insert the positive wire which is the red wire inside that terminal then I'm going to tighten that screw like that all right then I'm going to take this bicolor wire which is the negative wire and insert it all right loosen the terminal screw then insert the wire then tighten that screw like that All right now let's connect the other end to the controller alright in this case we are connecting these positive and negative wires to the second and third terminals because it is a 5 volt power supply the first thing you have to do is to loosen the screws and open the terminals like that then take the positive wire which is the red wire and I'm going to bend it like that okay insert that positive wire inside the sort inside the third terminal which is the 5 volt terminal then tighten that screw all right take the negative wire or the black and red wire then I'm going to bend it like that all right insert that wire inside the terminal then tighten that screw all right here's how to connect a power supply that outputs a voltage between 7.5 to 24 volts to the pixel LED controller it has the same uh, labels of the terminals all right the first three terminals are the positive terminals and the second three terminals are the negative terminals okay let's connect it to the controller all right the red wire goes to the sorry the red wire goes to the positive terminal and then red and 
black wire goes to the negative terminal. Alright, I'm going to connect the other end to the controller. The positive wire in this case connects to the 7.5 to 24 volt terminal. Loosen the terminal screw, then insert the wire and tighten that terminal screw. The ground wire goes to the, sorry, the negative wire goes to the negative terminal, goes inside the negative terminal. Put the wire inside and tighten the screw. In this setup, we are using two different power supplies. One is for the pixel LED controller or the controllers and the other one is for the pixel LED strips or strings. Alright, let's see how to connect this pixel LED string to the power supply and the pixel LED controller. The first thing you need to do is to identify the first and the last pixel LED of this string. Alright, let's take the pixel LED in this end of the pixel LED string and take a look inside alright as you can see there is an arrow pointing towards this cable and the connector in this case this arrow pointing towards the end of this pixel LED string. So this is the last pixel LED of this pixel LED string. Alright, if you take a look at the pixel LED at the other end, you can see this arrow of this pixel LED is pointed towards the second pixel LED of this string. This is the first pixel LED of this pixel LED string. Alright, you can see uh, two wires coming out of this pixel LED string. Alright, these are the power input wires. You can see the same wires in this cable as well. Alright, these are the power input wires. These are the wires we are going to use to power this pixel LED string. Alright, this is the positive wire and this is the negative wire. Alright, to identify that, uh, take a look at, look inside this pixel LED housing. You can see the positive and negative symbols. Okay. Take these two wires, this is positive and this is negative and I'm going to connect it to this 5 volt power supply. This is a 5 volt pixel LED string. So use a power supply that supplies that voltage. Don't use a power supply that has more output voltage than the pixel LED string get the positive wire and insert it inside one of the positive terminals and tighten that screw take the negative wire insert that inside one of the negative terminals and tighten that screw all right let's see how to connect this pixel LED string to the pixel LED controller. Alright, this is the first pixel LED in this string. Always connect the first pixel LED to the pixel LED controller. In this case, you need to connect it to the data, data line of this pixel LED controller. If you take 
a look inside this pixel LED. The arrow pointed to us the data line. It shows the data direction. So this is the data line, which is the green wire. Right? If you don't have JST connector to connect it to the pixel LED controller, use your screwdriver and push the pin of that push the middle pin of that connector and pull out that wire. Right, this is the data wire of this pixel LED string. Let's connect that data wire to this pixel LED controller. First, loosen the data terminals screw, then insert the data wire of the pixel LED inside that terminal. Then tighten that screw. If you like to know how to connect other type of pixel LED strings or with strips to T1000S pixel LED controller, check out the website article below in the description. Okay, since we are using two different power supplies for the pixel LED and the pixel LED controller, we need to create a connection between these two power supplies. I'm going to connect one of the ground of this power supply to the ground of this power supply. Now we are ready to go. We, all we have to do is to connect the AC power to AC to these power supplies and then insert the program inside this pixel LED controller. This is the plug top. This is the other end. Let's connect this wire to these power supplies. All right. Now you can see I'm using the Pixel LED controller without the SD card, but still there's a pattern or an animation in the Pixel LED string here. All right. You might ask where this pattern is coming from. It's not in the pixel LED itself. It is inside the microcontroller of this pixel LED controller. These animations, there are about four. If you press the mode button, you can go through these different animations. These are programmed to the microcontroller all right, these are the patterns. This allows you to check your system without the SD card. Let's see how it looks like when we insert our SD card, which has the programs. Make sure the controller is power off when inserting, when inserting the SD card. Make sure the direction of the SD card is correct. Insert the SD card to the SD card slot, then power on both the controller and the pixel LED string. Now you can see the first program. This is the second program. Alright, if you want to reduce the speed, press the speed minus button. If you want to increase the speed, press the speed plus button. If you want to change the program, press the mode button. If you want to save the settings, press the set button. Alright. There are two play modes. 
one is the repeat mode which will repeat the same pattern pattern or the program over and over again the other will go through the programs in your SD card one after another all right to change between these two modes press both speed plus and speed minus button together all right now select a pattern to be repeated like that if you want to go back to the other mode use the same method the speed press both speed plus and speed minus one now you are in the other mode let's see what will happen if we took out the common ground all right now there's no common ground between these two power supplies and this what will happen if there's no common ground between two different power supplies all right I'm going to connect it back again like that I can see it's working properly in this arrangement I'm going to supply both the controller and the pixel LED string with the same power supply which is a 5 volt 20 ampere power supply okay I'm going to connect let's connect the pixel LED string first the red one is the positive wire the white one is the negative wire The positive wire goes to the far volt input of the pixel LED controller. The next step is to connect the pixel LED to the controller. All right. This green wire is the data wire of this pixel LED string. Now I'm going to connect that to the data wire of this pixel LED control. Like that. Alright, let's see how it looks like when the power is on. I'm going to insert the SD card. Make sure the power is off. Insert the SD card. Then turn on the power to the controller and the pixel LED string. If you'd like to know how to create pixel LED effect files using LED edit software, check out the video links below in the description. In this arrangement, a single 5 volt power supply supplies the power to the pixel LED controller and the pixel LED string. Let's see what will happen when we turn on the power supply. Alright, as you can see the pixel LED string doesn't show the pixel LED program inside this SD card. It Instead it flickers with the noise coming out of this power supply. Also you can notice the power indicator of this controller barely lighting up. Okay, there's something wrong with this system. Let's find the cause of this problem and see how to fix it. To troubleshoot the system, I'm going to check the voltage of each segment of this system starting from the input power to do that I'm going to use 
a digital multimeter like this one okay now the first thing is to check the input voltage the input voltage is an AC voltage so you have to put your multimeter into the AC mode be careful when you're checking the input voltage because it is a high voltage if you touch these terminals it can be fatal so be careful Right, as you can see it's about 235 volt AC alright as the input voltage to this power supply is good so let's check the uh, input voltage of this controller the input voltage is a DC voltage so you need to put your multimeter to DC mode and take the positive probe of your multimeter and touch the power volt terminal screw and take the negative or the common probe of your multimeter and touch the ground terminal screw as you can see it's about 3.4 volt DC it should be about 5 volts but in this case we have low voltage from this power supply for a large electrical load the output voltage of the power supply can be reduced to a certain amount but for a small load like this one here it shouldn't be that low so we have a bad power supply in this case okay I have checked the components inside this power supply the switching FEDs and the other components are good unfortunately in this case we have a bad switching transformer so the only solution is to replace this power supply so let's replace the power supply and see what will happen Okay, now we have replaced the power supply. Let's see what will happen when we turn on the power supply. All right, now you can see the pixel LED program. As in the previous example, in this case, we use the same arrangement. A single 5 volt power supply supplies the power to the pixel LED controller and the pixel LED string. Let's see what will happen when we turn on the power. Alright, now as you can see the, there's no pattern and the pixel LEDs are white which means there is no data signal all right as in the previous example i'm going to check the voltages of this system okay put your multimeter in the dc voltage mode and take the red probe and touch the 5 volt terminal and take the black probe and touch the ground terminal 
Sorry about that. All right, as you can see, we have about 4.9 volts, which means we have good power input to the controller. First pixel LED is not working, which means in this case, we might have a bad pixel LED in this pixel LED stream. To fix that, let's cut off this pixel LED and give the power and data to the second pixel LED. Okay, let's scan it. This to the power supply. Alright, let's scan it. This data wire to the data output of the controller. Let's turn on the power and see what will happen. Alright, now you can see the pixel LED string is working. Let's see how the pixel LED controller will react to different SD cards. In this case, we have four SD cards. The first SD card is a damaged SD card, which is not working. The second SD card is a working SD card with an effect file for a different pixel LED string. The third SD card is a working SD card with an effect file for a different controller. The fourth SD card is a working SD card with the correct effect file but formatted in NDFS. All right. Let's see what will happen as we insert these SD cards to the pixel LED controller. The first SD card is the SD card that doesn't work. Alright, let's see what will happen. Alright, as you can see, the error LED blinks, but the These are the default patterns that inside the pixel LED controller. All right, that's what will happen if you insert a damaged SD card. All right, I'm going to take the second SD card, which has a effect file for a different pixel LED string. As you can see, the pixel LED pattern is plain on this pixel LED string, but the effect file is for a different pixel LED string. You might ask why it's working, because these both pixel LED chips are using the same communication protocol. So that's why it works. All right, let's go to the third SD card. All right, this SD card has a FF file for a different pixel LED controller. As you can see, the even there is a pattern it's not properly working because it is a FFR for a different pixel LED controller. Let's go to the last SD card. Alright, as you can see, the last SD card is a SD card with the current FFR, but it is 
formatted in NDFS instead of FAT32. As you can see, the error LED blinks and the default pattern is playing on this pixel LED string. All right, these not these are not the programs that inside this SD card. These are the programs inside this pixel LED controller. Thank you for watching. See you in the next tutorial.